Paraphrasing is an important component of the process of academic writing. In today's presentation, we will discuss what is paraphrasing in academic writing and what is the general process of paraphrasing in academic writing. So let us begin with the definition of paraphrasing in academic writing context. Paraphrasing is actually rewriting or representing the ideas of academics or writers or researchers in a text or passage. So generally, uh, the writing is done, the paraphrasing is actually done in a way that the essential and complete meaning of or the message and also the context of the original text remain intact, while the words or phrases used are different. Generally, paraphrasing is done of shorter text, texts, and so the, the length of these texts may vary from a sentence to a few sentences or a short paragraph. So paraphrasing, why do we need to do paraphrasing? So generally paraphrasing is aimed at locating and presenting main ideas from the target text. So as we know that in our academic writing, we need to refer to um, the writings of other researchers. And it is important that we need to locate and present the main ideas in the writings of other writers. And so the first thing that we need paraphrasing for is to locate and present, present the main ideas uh, in the target text. Secondly, paraphrasing uh, demonstrates our knowledge of the relevant literature in the area in which we are working. Uh, so a, the, the, the process of paraphrasing actually demonstrates our knowledge and understanding of the relevant literature related to the topic on which we are writing something. Then thirdly, it supports the paraphrasing actually is, helps in the process of supporting our arguments or pro providing evidence for our arguments. And lastly, um, as we know that we can make use of direct quotes from other writers or other texts, relevant texts, but uh, use of too many quotes or too long direct quotes is generally not feasible in academic write writing. And so paraphrasing actually helps us in avoiding too many or too long direct quotes from other sources or from relevant sources. Now, <clears throat> what are the general steps in the process of paraphrasing? So, as we know that um, in order to paraphrase a text, we need to, to read the text first. So, we need to read the text and we, read, uh, we need to actually read the text with full attention. Um, in many cases, one reading is not enough, and so we need to reread the text and to re-reread the text in order to get to the main ideas and to the connections between different ideas in, in the text that we are reading. Um, we also, at the, at the time of the second or third reading, um, it is generally useful to to note the key ideas and the connections between these ideas. Then we need to write the entire text in our own words uh, because that actually is the basic aim of paraphrasing is actually to write the text, the context and the meaning of the passage that we are paraphrasing into our own words. Once this is done, then we need to review, revise or rewrite for language, for structure, meaning and accuracy. In some cases, we might have made mistakes in interpreting 
ideas or in presenting ideas in correct language uh, we might have made mistakes in terms of the structure and grammar accuracy so we need to review and to revise and rewrite um, often several times then checking with the original text and making sure nothing important in the original is either missing or is additional in the paraphrased text. So once we have paraphrased the text, it is important to check the, um, the contents of the paraphrased text with the original one so that uh, to make sure that the paraphrased text essentially gives complete meaning of the targeted text. And the last thing the, in this is it is important to acknowledge the original text. So just paraphrasing without giving the citation or reference to the original text is, uh, will not be uh, academically appropriate. Moving on to some tips related to paraphrasing. So in other words, how can we do good paraphrasing? Uh, well, the things that help us in the process of paraphrasing include making use of synonyms. Uh, so generally synonyms is like the use of synonyms is a good way of uh, turning the target passage into our own words. Uh, but remember that just synonyms is not enough. Just the use of synonyms is not enough. Uh, sometimes we might use sparingly uh, words from the original text as well. So there, is, there should be a balance. Um, and there should be a balance of not just the use of synonyms, but also in terms of restructuring sentences uh, uh, from the original text. For example, we can make use of change of voice. So something that is written in the original text in the active voice might be changed into passive voice, and so on. Uh, then reorganization or reorder ideas. Um, another important tip that can help us in paraphrasing is to reorganize ideas or thoughts um, that, from the order that is given in the original text. So generally, if it does not um, uh, affect the message, the, the essential message of the original text, reordering a, or reorganizing of the ideas will be a useful way to paraphrase. Use simpler language in terms of vocabulary and structure. In many cases, the, the very aim of the paraphrasing is actually to simplify uh, the <clears throat> text that might be originally in difficult to understand uh, language or presentation. So it is. it will be a good thing to use simpler language um, so that to make the, the main ideas or concepts understandable for the reader. And the last uh, one in the tips section is to break longer sentences into shorter ones or in some cases to combine shorter sentences into longer ones. And so as you can see that uh, the use of synonyms, restructuring of sentences, reorganizing of ideas using simpler language and uh, breaking sentences into longer sentences into smaller ones or combining smaller sentences or ideas into longer one are some of the tips for doing or paraphrasing uh, appropriately. <clears throat> now, um, here are some examples. So the first example is an example of a sentence. So the original sentence is, there is hence a range of practices, strategies, and devices associated with reflection. And these have been used variously, keeping in view the aims and objectives of particular programs. So this is a sentence <clears throat> from this source, Khan 2012, which actually is my own PhD thesis. And so this is a sentence there, so I have paraphrased it 
into the following sentence. Several approaches and practices have been associated with reflection with a variety of uses in accordance with purposes of the individual programs. So remember that generally paraphrasing is uh, almost like in terms of the number of words, uh, it is almost the, uh, it's similar uh, in size or in terms of number of words or sentences used. The message is the same, but the words or, or the presentation actually is different from the original one in order to avoid plagiarism. Now here is an example of a longer text, um, <clears throat> or in other words you can say a paragraph. So on the left side you can see paragraph in original. Um, efforts have been made to tell apart reflection into a complex array of different types, levels and forms. The different types of reflection, it could be argued, referred to the process of reflection while the levels could be associated with the content of reflection. Further, the different levels of reflection have been associated with different levels of involvement in an understanding of educational phenomena. There are instances where dissimilar terminology is used for uh, articulating a similar level and form of activity and also where a particular term such as critical reflection provides diverse interpretations. The focus and subject matter of reflection also vary considerably across these models and it is difficult to make a clear and distinct identification of one or another type or level of reflection with one or another activity or aim across the models Khan 2012. So you can see it's a longer passage consisting of several sentences and so on the right side I have paraphrased it in the green color. So you can see the paraphrase is a bit shorter than the original one and the vocabulary is considerably different but the message and the, the, the actually the content uh, is actually the same. Reflection has been categorized into several types based on its content, process and levels. Besides the various levels of reflection referred to the degree of insights into an emergent in the process of education. The use of reflection terminology has not been consistent in terms of uniformity of meaning. There is also considerable variation regarding the subject matter of reflection across its variety of models, practices, and types. So you can see here an example of a, of a longer passage um, in original and then a, the one that I paraphrase.